welcome or welcome back to the Ascended Master Series. I am your host, Kendra, Divine Purpose Mentor, Higher Self Catalyst, Metaphysical Healer, and the Embodiment of the Divine Mother. And today I have two of my very close friends, the creators of the Mind Flavors program, Amy and Carl. Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming on. Oh, thank you for having us. I've told so many of my viewers about your program and just our connection and relationship. I think it's been so beautiful. And I really think that it's an example of, of like the feminine model just by like exchanging our mastery and just really growing together. And so you guys might know Amy and Carl as Carl Young and Emma Young. And it was on our very first session that we had and us meeting and you guys came to me to um for my mastery and my connection with Jesus that's what I think is he was speaking through me a lot during that session and then it just came through and I started laughing and they asked me what I was laughing about and I said um because Jesus had said um you know that that's Carl Jung right and so I said it because I thought it was funny because Carl's name is Carl in this life and the way it hit them, it was like the same feeling that I had when, you know, they, they recognized me in Egypt as Cleopatra. And then when I met with you guys again, the next time, and, and Amy, you said, did you know that Carl Jung's wife's name was Emma and all of these synchronicities and correlations. And it's just, it's to the point where it's undeniable. Wouldn't you say? That's what it feels like. (laughs) Yeah. Like we, we didn't know anything about them. We didn't study them or anything like that. And, and when you said that, I was like, that's interesting. And we did do some research and, and just in reading about their life, it touched us so deeply and. Right. And that's when, you know, it's like when the soul Mm -hmm. is calling us home, it's like when I was when they were like, our queen has risen, when it hit me, it was just tears. And it's the same thing that you were experiencing when you were reading about Emma, just tears. Tears. Yeah. yeah. And the same thing with Carl, my, my desk is over here and he was at his desk and I was at my desk and he was reading about Carl and I was reading about Emma and it was just like that. And, uh, and we just like got into it for a couple of days and then we just had to we just let it, it go because yeah, yeah those were or we have a big focus in this life. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but I think it's, it's important for people to, to know, because especially this year, I'm seeing an integration. It's so strange because I was listening back to an energy update that I did um, uh, January 12th, 2020. And I said, all of our past lives are going to be coming in and it's, but I didn't think that it was going to happen to me. <laughs> I, I was talking about for the collective. Yeah. Um, and so there is this, this heart knowing because our heart is where our soul lives. And so there's this recognition and, you know, sometimes we don't know, but I feel like it's just like when you guys met, it's like you guys knew yeah. each other, but you didn't know each other. Um, do you guys have that that picture from that night you guys first met so we can show how cute you guys were? You would go pull it up. Definitely looking for someone that night. Oh, <laughs> definitely does not look like the first time you're meeting. It really doesn't. Yes, doesn't. that does not look like two people who just met. No, that's so beautiful. And wasn't it... Um, so first off, let's get into like how we met. Yes. How did you guys, how did you guys find me? Yeah. Well, I was looking on YouTube and there's a podcast that we occasionally watch. And I, happen, and I happen to see the thumbnail on it with your picture on it. And something, for some reason, it said click on it. And I clicked on it. And we were not getting ready. We've watched it many times, their show. And, but at that time, we weren't ready to sit down and watch the show. But right. as soon as I clicked on it, Amy felt drawn to you and to, to watch. Mm-hmm. And she 
within a few minutes said, I think I'd like to book a session with her. Yeah. I, I was really excited actually to find you because I really believe like you're the one that I've been waiting for in a sense mm -hmm. to assist us because we've been, we've been doing our program now for three and a half years and our whole life was building up to what we're doing now. And I was just feeling like, I was just asking, please send us someone who has the gift of intuition and a psychic ability and who is on this path and who could really mm -hmm. assist us in moving forward and assist us in seeing things that maybe we're not seeing. Oh, that's so beautiful. But I never expected you to tell us who we were in a past <laughs> life. That was really <laughs> Well, it wasn't me. That's the yeah. thing. We have to get yeah. that clear because like, um, just like when we all went out to lunch that one day and like everybody was gathered and they were all like, oh, Kendra told us this, Kendra told us that. And I'm like, wait a minute, Jesus told you, Kendra didn't tell you anything. Okay. Cause it's not coming from the little eye or like my, <sighs> my, like, I think, you know, like my perspective or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not coming from that, that place it's coming from Jesus. And so like, Every time you doubted, there was no doubt in my mind because I, I, I trust Jesus. He doesn't, he doesn't make stuff up. <laughs> he doesn't. Um, even when he's joking, he's in truth. It's pretty blunt and straightforward. Yeah. Okay. And thanks for sharing that. And we had a couple of readings with you and then immediately we felt called to come see you in Sedona yeah then we had that connection and, and and then you were called um or jesus said you guys needed to move here and yeah. you just happened to already live in arizona so yeah. I mean, what's the chances of that yeah um yeah and and i was also um being called to because i've i've experienced like every point of polarity and and I do healing work myself and I, I've really deep dived into um, putting myself back together as it were. Um, but your program has definitely helped. And I love how when Carl, when I first met you guys, Carl, you said like my, our, our technology can really help you, but you didn't say it in a, a belittling way. You said it in a way that I knew exactly what you meant because I knew exactly where I was getting hung up in my own interpersonal relationships and the things, the patterns that it didn't matter, you know, how much healing I did. There's a wiring that happens in your brain that it's like, and if you don't have the consciousness to, to see past it, it's like, you're, even though you can know the difference, you still experience it from that victim consciousness you know because it keeps feeling like it's happening to you even though you know but you don't have that higher level of consciousness to to send past it and it just reminds me of that that um that session that we were having um where like not not an elevation session but our weekly sessions and I was just hitting a brick wall and I think you guys have experienced like that 13 year old in me that's hitting a brick wall, or I think she's, she's evolved past 13 now, but when I couldn't find a house and Amy, I'll never forget. You were like, well, what are your other options? And I was like, there is no other option. <laughs> I've tried all the other options. And you were like, there, okay. So let's see, like, there's no other. I told option. you to breathe. I told you to, yeah, breathe. <laughs> I told you to breathe. And it was several times. I kept coming back. Like, there's still, I'm in survival mode. I'm going to be homeless on the streets. And then Carl, you were like, there's a solution. You just can't perceive it from the level that you're vibrating at. Like it exists. It's just, you can't perceive it from, from where you are. And it felt so much like, oh yeah, I know these theories. <laughs> okay. And then you're like, you breathe again, breathe again, do it again. And then bam, in the middle of the freaking session, I cannot believe that happened. And I'm like, wait, hold on. And I grabbed my phone. Wait, what? What? This man that I had just oh. reached out to when I hit my knees before our session, 
literally surrendered in the bathroom. I don't, I call the angels to help other people, but I can only probably say a handful of times I've said, angels send help for me. Yeah. Um, and the moment that I said, angels sell, send help for me, uh, I need help. I um, had reached out to this man I'd met earlier that year. And I'd sent everybody I'd known that had lived in Sedona or owned a home and just asked them if they knew anyone. And as soon as I said, angels send help, he said, what's your budget? And so I thought he was just asking because maybe he knew somebody. I told him what my budget was and what I was looking for. And I didn't hear anything back from him. And then the middle of our session, after I finally you know, hit that last wall of resistance and went through it. And it was just like, I just like buoyed up above that level. And then he's like, I have this house at da, 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 go take a look at it. If you like it, it's yours. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I remember I read the message to you yeah. guys like several times, like, wait, what? <laughs> and you're yeah. like, the- you so you have options, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Some it's options. So interesting. It was so interesting though that you, you didn't tell us that. You didn't tell us that. Because even when we said, well, what are your options? You didn't even include that, even though that was a possibility. Because I didn't see it as an option. He he had just that's, said, you know, exactly. That's an indication of where your frequency was at the moment. You weren't able to allow it in as an option. And then as you allowed yourself to clear and clear and clear, you raised your energy frequency to the place where you it lined up. And right. <laughs> Remember her when she was, when she looked at the phone and she's like yeah. looking at us, just looking at the phone. <laughs> I was like a little dizzy. It was like an a almost, cognitive dissonance moment. Yeah, like, totally. what? <laughs> yeah. That's the beauty of alignment. It's like when you allow yourself to clear the resistance and raise your energy frequency and to get in alignment, it can happen that fast. We had another one of our members who she was asking for something, it wasn't showing up and we did some clearing in a session and an hour later, what she was asking for showed up. Wow. So, that's how fast. And what the beauty of you, though, is that we actually got to capture it all on video for our session. So that is. And you saw, and Carl's always telling me, you're so powerful. I don't know if you tell everybody that or what, but, and it was like, it was, it, it's those types of moments where I literally go through the resistance and two seconds later, I'm getting a message that I'm like, oh shit, it is me. You know, like it, it really is me creating all of these blocks. Um, and so I think that we can, we can often see that like with, you know, potential partners where it's just like, it's close, but it's so far. Like, it's just a miss because you keep vibrating from that, that, you know, pattern that you've been stuck in and they've up leveled or they're, they're starting to know the truth of who they are. And so it's just like a miss. And it's like, if you finally surrender those patterns that you've been living or perceiving in, then you're a match to your perfect partner. Um, and people will say, oh, you're so lucky, but it's not luck. It's alignment. It's really being in alignment. And I, I'm going to contradict myself here because I often say that twin flames are rarely romantic, but you guys are, um, one of the few that I've met that are romantic. And now I'm (laughs) realizing that everybody that I've, all of the couples that I've interviewed on, um, Ascended Master Series have all been twin flames. And that was not (laughs) That was not intended upon prior, but I have been going where Jesus has been guiding me. So I think that there's often like a miss. uh, I don't know if you guys consider you guys selves twin flames, but by my definition, you guys are because your divine counterparts that are working together harmoniously and being like, you know, guided by, I don't, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but what I see is you're guided by Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And, um, and you guys are bringing forth work to the world. It's like, um, God's work and you're bringing it forth for humanity. And so that's my definition of twin flames. It's not all this karmic runner chaser, you know, there, <laughs> no, those are catalytic relationships. Um, but I think it's so beautiful with you guys because, um, all of that knowledge that Carl Jung and Emma had, you know, created together or found together. And um, Emma stayed in the background. So we only knew about Carl Jung. We, we never heard anything about Emma. 
And at that time, Carl, you were very ahead of your time. And so it was almost like alien or foreign, the things that you brought to this world, um, people didn't understand it. And they're going, well, how does he know this stuff? And like back then, like psychology was still like a pseudoscience, you know, like people didn't, didn't, what is this? And now we're in a different time. And I think it's so beautiful that you guys chose to come back. And I, I remember watching one of um, your last interviews right before passing away. And you were, did not seem sick at all, but there was like a little, like something in your eye, like you knew you were about to, to leave and, and, you know, start again, but bringing forth mm -hmm this information and it's like Carl Jung had so much awareness of the unconscious mind that I can see it as you were like, all right, I'm going to store all of this lifetime's um, information in this part of my brain so that it's going to come through like this. And so it's like so beautiful because um, like, I think like just reading uh, some of your, your information that you've written and and you're like realizing, oh my gosh, this is like what Carl Jung would say, but you were saying it from your own perspective because it's just so seamless. And it's the same thing that I experience, you know, and I'm just speaking naturally. And Jennifer says, oh, that's the way, that's what Mary Magdalene teaches. And I'm like, I have no idea. It's the same thing when people are like, like when we were sitting at lunch and Jeff was like, yeah, Carl Jung says that. And he shows you like the thing he's got written of your like quote on his arm. Yeah. And you're like, you, it, Amy, you're like, you say that all the time. <laughs> like, it's yeah. like things like this, where we think that it's like, that, that it's just coming from this lifetime, but it's, it's really an integration of all lifetimes and bringing forth like the most prevalent lifetimes information that's going to assist us in this life because we're always evolving in our souls so how did you guys meet and like start your relationship in this lifetime yeah in this life unless you want to start with that lifetime well it, so i think it's interesting that Carl and Emma met when Emma was 13 going on 14 and in this life i was 23 going on 24. Yeah. However, when I turned 13, it was at 13 where all of a sudden I felt like there was someone I was meant to meet and my life could not start until I met him. I just got full chills. Yeah. And that was 13. So I had to wait 10, 10 years. And for a 13 year old, that's a lot of years. And between 13 and 23, there was no one else. I never had a relationship. And yeah, I mean, certainly there was guys that I might go out with or something, but there was never a special one. And I it's knew like, there was one and I really felt in my heart, my life would not fully begin until I met him. It's like feeling like, like, um, like how you guys haven't felt it necessary to get married in this lifetime because you guys never got divorced in the last lifetime. I think it's um, amazing that you guys met in this lifetime on the anniversary of your wedding, right? Yeah, I think that's the first thing that we saw. I was like, wow, that's really interesting because we met on Valentine's Day of 91. And and then when we when I saw that Carl and Emma got married on Valentine's Day, I saw Carl, I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And it's how like, we, yeah. It's like those little things that we put on our path, like activation codes, you know? And so it's like, you guys got the hint oh, it's time. And you just were walking in alignment and then happened to be at the same place. Did you guys even live in the same city? No. No? So tell us the story. You tell us. Well, my friend was part of a network marketing company that sold cosmetic products and they were having a big convention. What was it called? <laughs> <laughs> It was called New Skin. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. We you just like that. went to get some new skin and come back to this lifetime. And then you guys met <laughs> at a uh, conference called a New Skin, skin. Convention. 
Yeah. 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 I think we might have said that. Well, let's make it obvious. Let's meet yeah. it. Yeah. On our, on our anniversary. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Forgot. So my friend was, I was not part of that, but my friend was part of it. And, and he said, they're having this big party. Uh, I'd like you to come with me. So I said, all right. And, um, but I didn't have, he, he didn't have a legitimate pass for me. So he gave me his name tag. Oh so for the first week that we knew each other, so you only got another one for him, right? She 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 knew me as Michael because that was my. <laughs> but he went by his name. <laughs> so when we met, what? I I said, you didn't well, yeah, tell but, me I, this. I, but I go by Carl. So she thought my name was Michael, but I said I go by Carl. Okay, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's how he got in. His friend Michael had to say, go to the setting, say, well, I lost my ticket, but. He, he really gave it the name tag to Carl so he could get another one so he could get in. That was a little tricky, but it was. It was <laughs> wait, so wait, you waited a week until you told her your real name? Yeah. Wow. I bet you put was. that into the script too, because you're like, I don't want to make this too obvious for her. Let's yeah. see if she'll still know who I am if I say my name is Michael. Well, I didn't really care what his name was because. <laughs> I just knew right away that because your soul would know his soul anywhere. Yes. So did you finish your So story? I yeah, so uh, so I said I'd go to it and it was a the first night was a champagne party. So everybody up. was de dressed up. So mm -hmm. you might have noticed in that picture you couldn't really tell but I had a bow tie on there it's because I was wearing a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my friend and I walked into the to the big room where the party was, and we were just standing there. And all of a hundreds sudden, hundreds of people around. Okay, so there's a lot of people. He looked yeah. over at this table and he said, "He goes, oh, well, that looks like someone you'd be interested in." And he knew that if if he found somebody for me, that he he we'd be set for the night, and he we could go out and party together. So don't you so, think he was probably in your last life too? Probably. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, what are the odds he points at me? And then this, are you done with that part? Unless he was so, just like a clear channel. I mean, Michael is likened to God. So if he's just a clear channel, that might have just been dropping in and he just was the conduit of that. Yeah. Or you guys, but you guys probably knew each other in the past life. I yeah, think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. So, so he, he said, that looks like somebody you'd be interested in. And then he just walked off. So like I'm standing dying. there and I'm like, all right. <laughs> so my, my side of it is that I, I went to this event by myself. So it was a time where I was an esthetician. I was doing skincare and I learned about this new skin. I'm like, my intuition said I had to go. And I was, just went by myself. So I flew across the country. And what? Where yeah, were you living? Was it in Salt Lake City? I was, in, I was in Cincinnati. That's in the East Coast. Oh wow! So I flew by myself. Carl, where were you living? In Salt Lake City. At that time. Oh, you were in, okay. Yes. No, but you so, knew. Oh wow! That's intense. That's like. Wow. Okay. Since I was thirteen, I was I was searching. I knew there was someone. So, so I was like setting out this beacon of light. You're like, I just know I have to go to Salt Lake City. Wow. Okay. Go ahead. I've had those same experiences. So I'm just like, I'm not even wow. sure how much of it was conscious. Right. Um, you know, no, your higher so, self is like, come on. Yeah. A little carrot. Yeah. So I, I go to this events and I'm at the party and I'm, I walk in by myself and there's hundreds of people. And right away I meet this woman. Uh, her name is Mona and we start chatting. And then before I know it, some guy comes up and she's no longer interested in me she's talking to the guy and and they're talking and so I'm looking around the room and I across the room I I see Carl and um and I looked at these two and I said you don't happen to know and I pointed I never expected to hear what I heard next but Michael said oh yes I came in with them and I about fell on the floor I was like what <laughs> and then I got a little nervous because he, he went to get Carl and he's bringing him back and wait 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 so so did your friend Michael say, 
that looks like somebody that you'd be interested in. And then he walked over to talk to her friend. So, or had he had already walked over to talk to her friend and then said that? Yeah. So he, he and I walked in fresh from outdoors okay. to, the, to the party. And he immediately saw Amy and Mona sitting at the table talking. Mm. Now, Amy had just met Mona, but right. we, did, we weren't aware of that. And he saw them. And so he thought, oh, okay, there's a, there's a couple of girls there. And if I go, this one looks like one you'd be interested in. I'll go. <laughs> Take so, so he just walked well, look how that was even set up like that for uh -huh. you to see him across the room and him to just be like that looks like somebody you'd be interested in yes. and just to leave like he doesn't even normally guys would walk over together oh, this my, yeah. michael guy he just like goes over there and then you ask him the question i mean that's mm -hmm. like Okay, go, continue. Yeah, so we had an instant connect. Well, I, I, was, I felt right away that he would be someone very special in my life. And I had no idea how that could happen because we lived in, um, across, you know, on the East Coast and where he lived. Uh, but I just felt that. And, but we, it was a party weekend. So we just, you know. What do you mean the moment? We had a few days together. We had all the meals together and we hung out as much as we could in between the events, right? And so then I went back to Cincinnati and, and he stayed there. And this was in 1991 before even cell phones, much less the internet. So we would write letters back and forth because we had no idea when we would see each other again. We would talk on the phone always for two hours at a time. We just became really good friends. That's so interesting that you guys wrote letters back and forth because another couple that I interviewed that I think you guys know, mm -hmm. um, Colin and Pia, yeah. they came together for one night. Didn't they come together in Salt Lake City too? <laughs> really? I think it was Salt Lake City too. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. And they came together for one night, but both of them didn't live there. And they just like instantly had that connection, but they wrote letters back and forth for, I believe it was six months before talking on the phone for the first time. Oh, that's right. They wrote letters before, before they talked on the phone. We were kind of, yeah. doing both at the same and then he was time. like, can I call you? <laughs> Is yeah, there anything I wrong with talking on the phone? Yeah. And so I think that's interesting because, um, I do believe that with like twin flames or divine counterparts, especially ones that are romantic, it's like the level of sparks and, and the energy between you, it's so magnetic that there's a need for, for like, um, a, a recalibr recalibration. I can't say the word, right? Recalibration. Yeah. Okay. So like you guys go away and then you get to know each other through letters and phone calls so that you have a solid foundation and then come back together. How long was it before you guys saw each other again? Almost two years. What? Yeah. What do you mean? How did you stay Almost away? You never visited? Well, I'm not sure why I was in school. I was back in school and and I guess I was waiting until he moved to the Virgin Islands because right, it was that third year that we knew each other, or even the second year that you moved there, right? When did you move there, yes. Carl? Yes. Why? You just didn't want to, you didn't like the snow or well, something? What? <laughs> I don't remember yeah, why we didn't. Maybe it was that. I was. Okay. About why why, we, why we didn't connect? Why didn't we find a way to connect before two years? Mm. I'm not sure. I don't. We were connecting. Yeah, we were connecting and it was, it was great connection. Yes. So, so it was like, that was February of 1991. And then uh, that was 91. And then in 93, I think at the beginning of 93, well, you were in St. Thomas I by was then? I in St. Thomas by then. So that third, Thomas. so he had moved to the Virgin Islands. And then that third year that we knew each other, I went to visit him three times during that year. And from Cincinnati. I went on spring break 
it was in 93. Mm. So I went spring break and then I went in the summertime. And then at the end of 93, I went over for Christmas and I stayed for the New Year's. And so it was like January 1 or 2 of 94. And I left St. Thomas and I had no idea when we were going to see each other again. I get back to Cincinnati and it's freezing cold. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? I'm, I'm going to move to St. Thomas. So I called him up and I said, we went from not knowing when we would see each other again to me calling up and saying, I'm moving. And I was there within a week. Wow. And Carl, how did you feel? Yeah. I thought it was great. Well, that's awesome because you gave him enough time to warm up to the idea. Yeah. And we had some time there, um, you know, in person, hanging out three different occasions. And um, and so at that time, did you leave skincare? Oh, or were um, you not doing that anymore? Uh, yes, I think I was. That was just something I was doing. It wasn't something oh. I felt like I was going to continue doing. And wow. Yeah. So that was just like a total. Yes. To me. Like you got into. We set that up. <laughs> we set that up. Wow. I was never one that had like a clear path. Yeah. Same with me like going to um, cosmetology school. Like I was like, I wonder why we did that. <laughs> we were just oh, like. Because I wasn't doing anything everybody else was doing. I yeah. never thought to go to. I like to go to college. I mean, I went back later right before I met Carl just because I felt like the thing to do. Um, but I was studying theater and acting and creative writing. And, and it was a different time back then. We didn't have what we have today. So I, I was just looking for an avenue to express myself. Right. Yeah. And that's beautiful because it was preparing you for this time because you know, as your soul, Emma, she was afraid of being seen. She was afraid of being known. She didn't want to have any part of, of, you know, people really knowing how much you were, you know, interwoven in everything he, Carl Jung came up with. Um, yeah. And so it really is preparing you for this life to step forward, you know, at, as a unified field of consciousness, as this this, um, yeah, it's like you guys are really modeling to the collective what, what, um, like unity or divine union looks like, you know, it's not like this separation dance. And also, um, when did you guys start getting into like exploring the mind or how did that all come together? Well, Okay, let me just say this and you say that. Okay, so right before, <laughs> um, I had a, a, my first awakening when I was 20. And then I immediately started getting drawn to books like Shakti Wayne, Creative Visualization and um, Wayne Dyer, you'll see it when you'll believe it. And I started getting on, mm -hmm. I, I started to open up, oh, there's more to life than I thought. And, and we actually can create our own reality. And when I met Carl, the first thing he taught me like right away was how to, how to do the programming with the writing. So you can say that. Yeah. So I, my, my life was going pretty well. And then it got to a point where things were falling apart and I couldn't figure out why. And then a friend recommended some information to me about some ideas and I, from that information, I was able to use a process to reprogram my subconscious mind. And it really started happening overnight. It really amazed me what the results that I was getting just from writing before I go to sleep in a certain way, exactly what I was interested in experiencing and weren't you already was, doing um like listening to stuff at night when amy first wanted to spend the night yes and that was that that came a little bit later um i was already doing oh. these things oh so you're talking about actually. prior okay so how old were you uh let's see that was back in i was probably 
in my early 20s. Right. And your mom kind of prepared you as well. In many ways, yes. More ways probably than I could talk about in, in this gathering. But so I, this was, this was in 1987, 88-ish. And I started programming my subconscious mind and everything changed. And that's when I met Amy after that. Mm. Um, my inner work also told me that I was going to meet someone, a brunette, that, <laughs> at that event. So, uh, <laughs> and my life completely changed. I ended up moving to the Virgin Islands and uh, I've been using that programming ever since. So I've been doing it since the late eighties. Wow. And, and so was, what, go oh, ahead. Well, I was going to say it was from that programming that I programmed myself using that programming of the subconscious mind is what I did to program myself to create the mind flavors technology. And like the sub or the unconscious of the shadow is what you, you mastered as Carl Jung, you know, really understanding that. And so I think that's beautiful because that dropped in as if you just program it there, it will come out in natural ways. You won't even have to think about it. Right. Cause like 90% of our actions are driven on our, our, our unconscious. And so, I mean, we want to get that to eventually we're completely conscious of all of our actions and reactions. Um, when you guys moved but, to the Virgin islands, what were you guys doing this work? And Amy, did you get into doing hypnosis after that? That wasn't until New York City. Oh, yeah. It's a, definitely a place for hypnosis. <laughs> Why do you say that? New York City? I mean, you'd want to be put to sleep to live there. Oh, well, when I first moved there, it was amazing. I felt like. Well, you definitely need hypnosis to just like function in that place. Yeah. It's so overstimulating. Well, it's so different now than it was. I was there. I moved into uh, it was 2000 that I moved there. Oh, so you guys lived in the Virgin Islands for quite some time. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was there so, for years. And you guys were like in the diamond business or something there? In the jewelry business. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, was, I was in the diamond business before I went to the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. I actually was, it's interesting because I, I started using that subconscious programming and a friend of mine, I had gone on a trip to Mexico and my friend said, if you like this, you'll really love Rio de Janeiro. So at the time I didn't have the money to go to Rio and I started writing every night. I am in Rio de Janeiro in January of 1989. And I wrote that for a year, every night I wrote it for a year. And while things pr progressed to going on the trip, I didn't realize until, because we didn't fly into Rio, we flew into Paraguay, Asuncion, Paraguay. We went to Iguazu Falls and, and, and went through um, Uruguay and, or no, Paraguay and, and Argentina. And then we made our way up to Rio. And I'd completely forgotten about it that you've been writing that. That I've been writing that mm -hmm. I, because we were on the journey and it took us multiple days to get there. Mm -hmm. And then the night, I remember so clearly, the night we got to Copacabana and we were standing out there on the strip before going to my friend's uh, place where he had a, a friend had an apartment where we were staying. And I was standing out there looking at all the lights and everything. And I was like, wow, here we are. And so we go in. We walk right around the corner into his place and I, and I pull out my notebook, my journal to, to write. And I read what I wrote the last time on there. And it says, I'm in, and I, I realized, wow, it's almost midnight and it's January 31st, 1989. So oh. literally right down to the last, to the last minute. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And while I was in Brazil, 
we ended up meeting a guy in the gym business and he said, how about if you open up a store with me in St. Thomas? I didn't know anything about St. Thomas. So mm -hmm. that's what initially got me going to St. Thomas. So I went to St. Thomas and was working in the gym business. And then Amy came to St. Thomas and also started working in the gym business. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, Emma was from a family of luxury yeah. watches. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the, um, her father was, that's what he made his fortune with. Yeah. Wow. Not nuts. But we never thought that we were going to be where we are now. No. I was because... always I was always drawn to the subconscious and for 30 plus years I just shared it with everybody that I could. Well, Amy moved to New York and left Oh, you guys didn't move to St. Thomas. <laughs> what? All right, well, for um, I just kept getting okay, since since my awakening at 20, I just decided I'd always follow my inner guidance. And when I was in New York City, or not New York City, when I was still in St. Thomas, uh, the last couple of years I was there, I, I kept feeling my, I kept feeling like I meant to go to New York City. And it didn't make any sense because I lived in the Virgin Islands. It was a beautiful place. I had Carl there and it was everything that I had dreamt of and that I was doing. And in addition to working in the jewelry business, I was, you know, acting on stage and doing that. And that was a dream of mine that I fulfilled there. And so, but I kept feeling it. And Carl's always been so wonderful to encourage me to follow my inner guidance. And the divine mother was calling you like, yeah. I need you in New York. Yes. And so uh, even though I thought, oh, I'm going to go there to pursue an acting career, my higher self, my inner self, knew that there was so much more to it way beyond that I could even imagine because I I never really saw myself doing what I ended up doing so I went there and uh it wasn't long that I was there and I was looking at a backstage newspaper that's what you look in New York if you like to for auditions and that type of thing and and there was a, a, an ad in there for hypnotherapy class starting and I always was fascinated by the mind even though I never really studied it um, and my intuition said, go to that class. So I called them up and they said, perfect timing. We start tomorrow. Oh, wow. Um, and that was really the beginning of my journey into healing and awakening. You and have to tell me, how long were you guys in the Virgin Islands together? Well, I was there about 10 years total. And you guys were there together um, like seven? I was, yeah, that's right. Yes. Seven, I was there seven years. Uh -huh. And then how long were you in New York by yourself? A year and a half. Yeah. Wow. Did you guys not visit each other? We did visit yeah, each other. Yeah. I oh, went okay. to there and he went to there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, a long yeah. No, you guys are just showing that, like, that there was not a codependency. So that's beautiful. Because yeah. you guys were like, in this lifetime, we're just going to flow. We're just going to be in the flow and we're just going to, we're not going to force each other to be in certain roles. Like, I think that's beautiful. And, and every time you guys talk about that and I ask you like, well, how long was it for this? It's because I'm seeing the larger patterns of like what, how you guys wrote it. Mm -hmm. And so you did that, like, <clears throat> there's like, um, an agreement. I almost called you Emma, Amy, that you made as Emma of like, if I ever feel <clears throat> like too enmeshed in, in him, I need to go do something for myself or I need to go where I'm being called, you know, so that you would always have that like flow. So that's so beautiful that you listened and it wasn't like, you know, a big dramatic, oh, we have to break up now or, you know, I'm so mad at you. It's like, it's really, it's really you guys like, leading by example of like how to do this right like how to do relationships right and I'm not trying to put so much pressure on you guys I'm just saying it's beautiful to witness so go ahead continue so you started your um hypnotherapy class mm -hmm. yes um and I was beginning to also get downloads of inspiration to share. And I had this guidance that I'm meant to speak and share these things, but 
thing was that I had so many blocks that I wasn't able to do it. And that was like a big, it wasn't fun for me. Mm. And so I just kept searching for more. And I thought hypnosis was going to be the answer. And it did help. But because there there was so much going on and I just kept saying, what else is there? What else is there? What else is there? And and, deeper. Yes. And I studied all different types of healing modalities. And I did, I did end up, um, I finally did learn a, a way that we can clear cellular memory from our body. And when I started doing that, that was a big relief. And I started feeling a lot lighter in my body. But my mind was still playing tricks on me and um, and we were and what was going on with you that we were still just we were always asking, how can we do this easier, quicker, faster? It's like it's taking too long. And when am I going to be able to get to the other side of it so I can actually do the work that I came to do in this life and be who I came here for? Yeah, right. Yeah. So the writing process and, and the hypnosis processes, uh, they're very powerful, but in a way they're really kind of only working on certain beliefs at a time, individual beliefs at a time. Maybe you get some cross pollination, so to speak, but relatively speaking, it's very narrow in focus. Uh, which is great for specific things. So I was able to manifest all kinds of great things over the years with the writing process and, and also enjoyed the benefits of hypnosis. But I was still, and it, this clarity really came to me even more just recently. There were so many limiting subconscious beliefs that were probably from beyond this lifetime Um, and to target every single one with the writing process things that I wasn't even aware of that (laughs) and and now you're working on the collective Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much cross entanglement when it comes to beliefs and how it affects all different areas of our lives so even being aware of where the beliefs were that were holding certain things back is is a bit of a this is reminding me of Carl Jung's structure to the unconscious theories of the personality in analytical psychology. And he shows you, or you show us. (laughs) Yeah, um, with Carl Jung, with your, um, the structures of the unconscious theories of personality, it's like you give us this, this circle diagram And, and it shows like this much of the circle, like a little fraction of the circle is actually the individual. And then all of this, like down here is the unconscious individual or the shadow, but then all these other influences. And then like a mask that a person puts on as a persona, that's not even in the bubble. It's not even in the circle. It's just something we wear on our head, like, this is me. Um, And, and then we have um, the part of us that we're like, I'm definitely not that, but that's more inside the bubble than the mask that we put on. But normally we're attracted to that, that part, the, um, that's like the polar opposite. And this, like, cause I was going to school to be, um, studying behavior, behavioral analysis. And so analytical psychology by Carl Jung, it was like, that was my thing. And because the majority of the circle of the person's identity is the unconscious, is the collective unconscious. And so when you're going piece by piece to try to heal these little beliefs, you're going to start working on the collective unconscious. And then it's like, it's going to be a never ending, you know, thing. Um, And um, yeah, so I can, I can understand getting to that space. So that was your breakthrough. And then what happened? So we were in we were in New York, and I had reached a point where I felt like it was kind of like a plateau. And oh, so you came to New York after a year and a half? Yes, he moved. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What was calling you to New York? You just wanted to be near Amy or were you? Well, Amy, Amy and the, the long commute between the bridge, and I, the 1200 mile commute. No, no, it was more than that. Uh, uh, and then <laughs> it's about how far it is from here to Montana. Yeah, it was 1200 miles from St. Thomas to Miami. And then oh, wow. Miami up to New York. So, um, so Amy said, well, why don't you come to New York and you can do your art? So I thought, well, all right, I'm, I'm, I was kind of, I had already had more than 10 years in the, in the gem business. And although I loved it and it was great, I was ready for a change. And so I thought I'd be going to New York to pursue my art career. What kind of art? some of the art that you see behind us oh that's yours i didn't know that oh that's awesome and a variety of other things i use gemstones and art and some other things but oh okay so and right when i got to new york short within a month mm -hmm. somebody asked me to join them in the diamond business <laughs> So, he so I got back into the diamond business again uh, in New York for a few years, about four years, five years. I had reached a point where I was manifesting all these things, but I could still feel the weight of those other things. And it, it wasn't, I, I felt like it was because of those other things that I wasn't excelling more than I was and in the areas where I was focusing. And so I decided to use the powerful process of the writing to program myself. And specifically what I wrote was that, um, that I increase my manifestation abilities exponentially. And the subconscious doesn't have limits. Right. And suddenly I was drawn to a variety of different things like sacred geometry and, and some other different um, ideas that affect our consciousness. And because consciousness is literally just sacred geometry that repeats in patterns of time. Ooh, yeah, I love that. It's, it's in my book. <laughs> you could read it. <laughs> I love that. It's so true. I always say yeah. it's the language of the universe. Yeah. So I decided to start experimenting with it, with some of the geometric configurations and some of the ideas that I was already aware of for over the, over the years that I had been learning and picking up through hypnosis and all, all kinds of other things. Um, even the crystals of the gems influenced some of the exactly other things and I started experimenting with it without realizing how powerful it of an effect it was going to have on me while I was creating it and experimenting with it what year was that mm, 2015 April 15 <gasps> so that's when my kundalini awakening happened Really? What? I actually thought about it for a few months before I started building it. And then in 2015, I completed the first version of the Mind Flavors technology. Mm -hmm. And it started, it was working on us without us realizing it. Our and collective unconscious was like working together. <laughs> That's awesome. And then you're, and then you're all, I think she's a part of our consciousness. Go get her. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So we started using it. And, um, oh my God. We are so powerful because we're connected to the oversoul of like humanity. And so when we shift our consciousness, it affects the larger patterns of the collective unconscious. Oh, wow. I see the I see why we've been brought together. Yay. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Three, the um, Trinity. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, I'll stop interrupting. Yeah, so good. 
So then that one day, talk about that one day. So everything started speeding up and and which is what happens with this technology is all the things that were stuck are suddenly oh my God. Speeded up. It just listen. comes to the surface. <laughs> yeah. So, so imagine, so be imagine, ready for change. Imagine not having a guide. That's what we were experiencing. Oh, no. We were the first mm-hmm. ones to go through this mm-hmm. uh, without even realizing that it was what was You thought you were playing. We had no idea how powerful it was. Uh, no. And, mm-hmm. and so everything started speeding up. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're aware of how to how to navigate that. that and, and yeah. it, right uh-huh. but in the beginning i didn't even have it targeted in focused in specific ideas the way that it was because it was just the raw technology and um mm-hmm. but there was a very interesting effect that happened right away that really opened my mind up to what was happening <clears throat> and it was I remember we lived in a in a big loft in New York, so it was one big open space, uh, and I was doing something all the way on one end by the window, and I was I remember leaning down and suddenly realizing that I my mind was crystal clear and I I had no thoughts of worry, and we had a lot of things going on and what normally would be a lot of considered a lot of pressure and things to be naturally be stressed about, Mm -hmm. which we were stressed about, or I was prior to this. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I realized I'm not worried about anything. Silence. And I looked over at Amy across the loft and I said, I'm I'm not able to worry about anything. Are you? I just realized that I can't worry about anything. Can you? And she sat there for a second. <laughs> Will you tell it yourself? Um, I said, I said, I can't worry about anything either. And then you said, I said, well, come on, try to worry about something. He goes, try, try to worry. Oh my God, that's so weird because it was 2015 my whole life was falling apart and I was trying to put myself back together. And then my Kundalini started awakening. Jesus took me through 40 days and 40 nights where I'd literally go put something in my mouth and he would go like this. And so it would go shooting across the room. My transmission on my car went out because he was like, just stop, just go sit in a house. People thought I was like the guy I was living with. He left because he was like, what is happening? He thought he needed an exorcism or something on me. Um, and I could not sleep or eat anything. And I was just like, like vibrating for 40 days and 40 nights. Like I would try to go to sleep and I was just like, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> and so I finally sold a pair of Gucci shoes, um, to get across town, to go to this therapist that I'd known. Cause I had, we'd worked together. I was helping him write his dissertation in mindfulness. And so I went, I knew he had a group therapy and I knew he knew something about like awakening and spirituality. And and he seemed like the only person in the whole world that I knew that might know what the hell is happening to me. So I got across town. I see an ambulance in the the driveway. They canceled his freaking class because somebody had a seizure or something, probably because they could feel I was coming. They're just like, you know, Um, and I fall down in the, in the office. Like I have to see him. He is the only one. And I just sold a pair of Gucci shoes to get here. I don't have any way to get back. I had no idea how I was going to get back across town. And so he finally sees me and he ended up giving me a ride home that night. And so he just, he was so like, he wrote his dissertation in mindfulness. And meanwhile, I had no idea about mindfulness, but I was studying behavioral and analytical psychology. So I could put my mind into figuring out anything. So even though I wasn't living very mindful, I was able to give him a bunch of theories for him to write his dissertation. So technically he owed me, but anyways, (laughs) um, so I'm sitting there freaking out and like just unloading all this stuff onto him. Like, I haven't slept or ate anything in 40 days and 40 nights. Everything's going and he's just silent. And I'm like, aren't you going to say anything? Like, and he's just like, where do you live? Let's go. And I'm like, 
but you didn't do, you didn't help me. And so on the way there, I remember I just kept going and he's just driving so peacefully. And then I'm like, tell me what to do. I need some advice. And he's like, okay, Kendra. He's like, I want you to suspend your ability to feel fear for one day. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I just told you all these reasons why I have so many reasons. He said, I didn't say you don't have a reason to fear. I didn't say that the fear wasn't valid. I said, suspend your ability to feel into your fear for one day and see what happens. He said, when a fearful thought comes up, don't feel into it, just suspend it and focus on something that makes you feel better. And I thought, is this guy serious? Like, all right, I'll try it. Cause at this point I'll try anything literally for one day. So like the whole day I was like, and I've always been super conscious. <laughs> it doesn't mean that my consciousness has always been in alignment. <laughs> it's been everywhere. And so I just remember the fearful thoughts would come in and I would just see them like a thought bubble. And I would just like, nope, we're going to push it away. We're not going to fill into it today. <laughs> and then everything shifted. The, the people called me about my car and they were like, magically a transmission came in and we're going to have it done for you tomorrow. I'm like, been waiting for like a month and then oh we got you in to see this attorney and that, and I'm like what and so like all of this stuff was happening I was like all right there's something to this and so that's that's when I so I think that's amazing that it was both of us for the same year that we stopped worrying there's something to that okay go ahead well for me it was such a miracle because I I think I had chronic worry if that you're not worrying, if you're not praying, you're worrying. It, it went, it went really, really, really deep. So I feel like once again, Carl saved my life with the technology. Aww. Yes. <laughs> and just like when I first met him, he's the one who helped me love myself and learn mm -hmm. about who I am. So he was so many things to me. So no wonder I couldn't wait to meet him. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna make me cry. Yeah, so it's um, I really believe that technology saved my life because I was really in a place. Not only did I have chronic worry, but crazy, crazy irrational fear. Like I literally, because I'd been searching for so long and and nothing was fully working. And I I was have this calling to do this work, and I I had so much fear. Wow. I had so much, all of that. And I really was at a place where I was like, I told God, I said, if you would really like me to do what I'm here to do, I kind of laid out what I was asking for. And, um, and I got it. So, and it came through him. And I think that's a perfect example of, um, I feel like divine counterparts what makes the difference between a divine connection and a karmic connection is in the divine connection, it doesn't matter what you guys are going through. Even if there's separation that happens, still, no matter what, you're always making each other better, like without even trying. And because there's a level of love, but also like, I feel like it's a part of the pattern, but like, there's a level of like, you always want the best for them. So you're conscious of like to not belittle them and to almost be more conscious of those, um, you know, the, the um, God, I can't even think of what it's called. When you are fault finding, it's like when you have a divine connection, instead of going in to protect your ego and fault find the other person, instead, you almost like you take more responsibility yourself and you focus on seeing the God in them and you allow them to rise. And so it sounds like, you know, no matter what you saw or where Amy was, you never let that change who you knew her to be. Like you always knew um, the essence of her soul and you allowed her to rise to meet that. And I think she felt the same way about you. What would you guys say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you guys would have started picking each other apart, it would have been 
not great. You know, and I'm sure you've had your moments, but even, um, but in the end, it was always making you both better. Yes, yes. Well, we, we, we had a lot to clear and unravel. However, the entire time, it's, we've always had that such a strong bond. Uh, yeah. Like a, a deep bond and so much love was there. And it really makes sense that it wasn't, it didn't just begin when we met here. Right. And, and the way that we came into this life, like um, consciousness, that was our thing always. And, um, and then now we're doing this work and what's coming out of us, it's like, where is it coming from? Because we haven't studied these things. We didn't go to school right. for these things. <laughs> Just like and, me, I'm like, I've never read the Bible. People are like, but you're like walking, talking Bible. Yes. So I was there. Yes. Um, fast forward to, so I said, I was asking for certain things. And one of the things was that it was necessary to get out of New York City and to be in a place where it was like vacation for us. And there was, it was warm and sunny skies and kind of like a sanctuary place where no one knew us, not because we don't love people, but because we really required to be in a space to do our work. Wait, so 2015, you guys were living in New York. Yeah, and we left and on 2017, March 1st, 2017, we left. Oh my God, because you guys, Carl, you lived in Salt Lake City. And so in 2016, I moved to Salt Lake City. And then you guys moved, I was living in Arizona. Wow. Pretty much near where you live now. So we I was living of, down in yeah. Tempe. <laughs> And well, so you guys yeah. lived over here and then you got the call to move to Arizona. I left Arizona, October, 2016, went to Salt Lake city, then went from Salt Lake city up to Montana and then back to Arizona. Cause the end is the beginning. The beginning is the end. <sighs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. I'm telling you, the more we deep dive into this, I'm going to show like that. I, I really like, agree with you. I really think that there's so much that there's so much that you can't, that can't it, deny it. And, and it, yeah. So we, we got here and we really, no, even that you guys met me right when I went to New York. Didn't you guys meet me right after I'd gone to New York? Or was we met you right before. Just before you whoa like, like even i think the week before yeah it was really close mm -hmm. oh my god this is so crazy no it's so intelligent okay <laughs> keep going yeah so oh, there's some yeah wow we so wrote <laughs> this yeah um what's he next? wasn't joking when he said he sent you back to help me <laughs> yeah wow Oh my God, he really did. Thank you guys for coming back. I needed your help. Oh my God. Okay. Oh. Wow. Holy. Okay. Hmm. I thought he was joking. And he doesn't ever joke. And like, why? Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You guys really. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> All right. This is big. It's probably good for our our consciousness to think that it's just little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay. Technology itself was so powerful. We thought we would just offer that to the public on its own. What year was that? We got here in June or July of 2017. Wow. And so now you guys get to give this to the world. So now you get to see the transformation that you've had in your own life with clients. And can you just talk about like what that's like? I mean, I know from my own experience, like doing this work and, and it's like a gift that just keeps on giving. 
thank you for that. Yeah. How can people um, reach you or experience the technology for themselves? They can go to mindflavors.com forward slash VIP. Okay. And, and But I just want to say, first off, be ready to really elevate in your consciousness and like, don't, you can't come if you want to like, hold on to your old patterns, like really be ready to surrender it. Cause like, I don't, I don't think that I, I knew the, the possibilities, but I didn't have any idea of how much I had just been managing, you know, like it doesn't ripple anymore. I'm good. It's just, yeah. you know? And so when all of that, I was like, what the, and I was just like <laughs> crying in my car, like what is happening? I don't want to continue. I don't, I can't handle this. And then to get that through that, that other side. And it wasn't even, um, I think I was literally, Oh, I literally started mind flavors and then bam, launched my course, launched the ministry and was working five days a week and, and the directive for these three pilgrimages all came in within three weeks That's of starting mind flavors. Yeah. And so it was like all of this stuff that was unconscious was coming up while the rest of my life was finally launching. So it was like, for me, it was like, it was like you like launched a rocket. Right. And so like, you feel that it's just like a, when you have a bow and you like go to pull it back, it's like feeling that pulling back can feel like, Oh my God. It's, and so you just have to surrender all control and let it go. Cause then you get launched and it's beautiful. And I've been going, going, going oh, ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's cool about the technology is it it pretty much does all the, the heavy lifting for you. You surrender. <laughs> if you fight like me, like, no, I want to hold on to it. I'm not doing that. No, I want to. This then, is exactly oh. why we have the coaching and why we meet with our members one-on-one -on -one yeah. every week. And this program is highly accelerated. Um, yeah. But to answer your question earlier, what is this like? It's It's our favorite thing in the world to meet mm. with our members and to connect with them every day. And we've been doing this now for uh, three years and five months almost, almost wow. like three, almost three and a half years. And when we came here, we completely surrendered everything and we just followed our inner guidance. And when we opened the doors to our program, all of our focus was just on the transformation. And it's just been amazing sense because when we first opened the doors, we hadn't connected with anyone in a while. We had kind of retreated those last couple of years in New York. And, and uh, I was, we had this, we, we created this program and who's going to be in our program. And I was guided to reach out to people that I had not friends. I was really clear not to have friends or family to go through it first. So I reached out to some people that I'd met at some events and I really wasn't comfortable doing that, but I did it because I was guided to do it. And they came in and- Like I was guided to do today. Yes, yes, exactly. And I just, we, they got amazing results. And, and I was told that I would never have to do that again. That's what the message. Right, Getting I would never have to do that again. Rolling. And just then people just show up. And that's so the beautiful thing. And that's really, Carl and I, we have a background in sales. We can like, we're good at that, but we were guided that this isn't about- You don't need to sell all. it. The people have to be ready and if they're showing up to us then that's saying that they're ready and yeah because uh, they're following their own guidance yes yeah. yeah but the important thing is is to um let people know that it's available and let people know who you are yes yes absolutely. yes i think it's interesting that we even started our businesses around the same time as well yeah and no, we're going to this it. next level together like yeah. it's just and it's the same thing with me. I've, I have not, I don't go, I have a background in sales as well. I was like the top seller in the country for Samsung. Um, but I have never sold myself. And so like today when I was guided by Jesus to go get my, my sisters who haven't gotten the information yet, who are supposed to come and join from this pilgrimage, it was coming from a different frequency. It's not like there's nothing in me that's like 
even thinking about selling you something. No, I'm going, I'm going to grab you because Jesus told me to, and you're supposed to bring in these union codes with us. Like, cause we're all in this together, you know? And so it's up to them to use their own discernment. If it's in their, if it's in, in their field and, and if it, they have um, that guidance to come as well, then it's a perfect match. And so I think that if you do get guided to reach out to people in the future, that you should just trust it, but only come from like that perspective of like, you're just going over and like nudging somebody that's really distracted, but God's like, Hey, they need to not be because we're healing the whole unconscious, the collective unconscious. (laughs) So we need some of our heavy hitters that are like really tapped into the collective unconscious. Can you imagine like, I'm like seeing like 12 or 13 and like, it's like, we're connected to like, Oh, it's another thing. Uh, Carl Jung, you brought to, um, psychology was form and archetypes and archetypes is like really what I, I love. And so if you think about it, if there's like 12 or 13 archetypes in the collective unconscious that like, I see like, um, their brains and they're like, they got tubes and like it's being you know fed to the collective and so if we go and we grab all of those those big figureheads that are feeding the unconscious in the in the conscious or whatever um and we shift all of them get them into the program we shift this world you know we bring in that it's like the golden age transition team it's like yeah so follow that guidance is what I'm trying to tell you. Cause it's coming in so clearly that, I mean, when you and I are getting those hits, we got to trust it because now we see how connected you, us three are. Mm. And now, yeah, even more than I think that we've ever known and how, when we made decisions, completely not knowing each other to stop with the worry, stop with the fear and, and choose to, to be in the present moment and to follow our bliss and our joy and to really do the work too. Mm. Not just be like, oh, this is too much shadow. I don't want to do it. I'd rather just have a drink or, you know, go do this. Instead, we were, we've been like soldiers, like boots <laughs> on the ground. Like, no, we got to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, there was no other option. No other option. Yeah. Because we're all going home and I'm going to be here until we all are home. So there's no no time like the present. For me, I mean, what motivates me to be on this path is I know that I'm here to walk out as the embodiment of the divine mother. And I've been speaking about God's world since I could literally speak and my purpose for coming to this planet. And so like, I'm here to universalize wakefulness on the planet. And so I feel like you guys have like a similar goal or like what what is your your goal or dream for for your technology and for humanity? Well, my my dream is to free humanity from limited thinking. Mm. And we're seeing it happening with the mind flavors technology. Yeah. And my vision is happy people everywhere. And so yes. we're doing this together. And that's so beautiful. Yeah, because we can really um, create a self imposed imprisonment when we have limited thinking. And I feel like all of the programs that we've been indoctrinated in have told us that we're little sinners that shouldn't even try because eventually we're just going to go to hell, you know? And it's like, that is crucified all of humanity. And so it's now that we're to this level, we're stepping into the golden age and this consciousness is available to us. Whereas before we've had to put on these, you know, we've had to be like half on just to be physically incarnated upon this planet. Now that the planet and the collective unconscious is rising, we can have these higher levels of consciousness and still keep a body, you know? And so- that's good. Yeah. So I feel like <laughs> what? Well, I was really happy to learn that because I like to ascend. I also like to still be here. Yeah. I mean, because um, 
we, I mean, I think that we all have, at least the three of us have assisted the collective from a light body form from spirit. Um, and especially when the collective is so asleep and under psychosis and hypnosis, they don't even hear spirit anymore. Mm. And so, um, we needed to come down in physical form. And we all knew that that was going to be risky to put on the smuggle meat suit and completely forget and, and hope that all of our, our spells that we put to awaken us would work. And I just, I thank God that we've gotten here um, because it wasn't easy. And, and we really had to, um, you know, every time we've gotten distracted, had to be like, no, 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 wait, <laughs> like, and just snap yourself out of it. And so yeah. I would love for, well, I'm here to awaken the entire sleeping world. So I would love for everyone on the planet to experience your technology, but I don't want to overwhelm you guys. Um, <laughs> so yes. uh, if they wanted to experience this, like, do you have any programs that they could try out or? Well, we have an upcoming free class that we're really oh. excited about, and it's called Rewriting Reality, a Rewriting Reality Masterclass coming up. And when is that? It's, when is the March. day? It's, um, yeah. Is it coming up like next March, month? March 22nd. Perfect. Yes. So would you like to talk about that? Um, oh, yeah. Let me talk. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so we're really excited about this because this is something that anyone can do. Anyone, all you require is to have a notebook and a pen and Carl's going to teach everyone how they can rewrite their reality with the writing process that he has been teaching people for over 30 years now. Wow. Yeah, that's super exciting because they will, you will see results from this. Yeah. And then from that, uh, in, um, starting on April 1st, we're starting our Wake Up Happy for Your Business 30-Day Transformation. We've really been called to work with entrepreneurs, change makers, but certainly anyone who feels that they are ready or welcome. And that's gonna be a 30 day transformation. Um, it's not gonna have the mind flavors technology. This is kind of like a pre to the mind flavors. The right. mind flavors technology is highly accelerated. That's yeah. really more for somebody who's been on this journey for a while. And- That's ready for the slingshot. <laughs> yes. So the 30 days is gonna be super powerful. Uh, but it's more gentle. Yeah. Yes. I well, can my is gentle. It's gentle, but it's just accelerated. How would you say the difference, Carl? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, it's more like an introduction to yeah. the process. I like it. It is gentle. It's like, um, it's like the mother's approach versus the father's approach. I took yeah. the father's approach, the slingshot. <laughs> but, yes. but that's the path that I'm walking. I, I need that level of acceleration. Um, and so I think that this is beautiful, especially for people that are like, I'm, I'm hit, I'm hitting that plateau right now. I'm not, I'm, I know that there's something else out there, but I don't know what it is. This is like perfect because this is gentle. This is even the way you guys walked in, but you guys have that knowledge of how to get to the other side now. And that's the most important thing yeah. as, yeah. as we are guides, we've already walked this path. And so we're coming down to you with the light and we're saying, follow me. I already know how to get out of here. <laughs> like, just come well, with I'm me. I'm glad you said that because that was my thing for how do I get to the other side? How do I get to the other yeah, side? I really felt it, you had I, no freaking I, light. I, felt like I, was like, a, okay. yeah. I really felt like I was a hopeless case. And it was like really, really I did hard. too. I thought and they then, literally <laughs> they said you're gonna have to be on medication forever. I was like, that does not work for me. You're yeah. always going to be broken. I was like, that does not, that's not fair. <laughs> I didn't do this to myself. But here's the most beautiful thing about it, because I used to go, you get so concerned about time. Like I felt like I was running out of time. And now that it's truly a consciousness thing, consciousness is everything. Realize time we, is really when really we just upgrade our consciousness, we get to live in a whole new reality. And now that we're in this place of actually living what I dreamt for my whole life, it feels like I have been in it for my whole life. So there's no looking back and saying, oh, I wish I would have done this sooner or anything like no. that. It's so perfect. And it just feels like it's always been this way. And so we have demonstrated that this is possible for anyone. Right. And it's like, when you get to that level of consciousness, you realize, 
oh, wait, time is merely an illusion. We literally created it. And then we started believing in it and aging, (laughs) but we actually can just stop that. Mm -hmm. And I see more and more of us as we are coming together and bringing in these new union codes and being a yes. um, I see us stepping into our true form and um, with no attachments to that form. So thank you guys so much for coming on. How can everybody, yeah. How can everybody get in touch with you and Um, if they want to join your rewrite your reality class on March 22nd. Rewriting reality. Rewriting reality class.com. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Rewriting reality class.com. Yeah. Rewriting reality class. Everybody should definitely join. And so um, thank you guys so much. I'm sure I'll probably have you guys on again. This has been amazing. And I just letting my psychology teacher know if she's watching, I told you that I would work with Carl Jung. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You guys can find me at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. And thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for being here.